dear learners welcome to this session so in this session i am going to discuss about the electrical power system basics so after going through this session you will learn about the uh, some basics of the electrical power system you will understand how the electrical power is generated and uh, you can explain about the power transmission system you can also describe about the power distribution system and various problems related to the generation transmission and distribution and you will know about the grid so learners in india the electrical supply is generally alter ac or we can say alternating current which uh, work on the ac uh, air, ac uh, current or voltage and it is available at many different voltage levels depending upon the ease of use or technical requirements so you can use both ac power or dc but generally the ac is more uh, popular so the lowest voltage level the uh, retail consumer gets the electrical power at 230 volt and this is the single phase two wire supply you all aware about this and so barring this uh, elect single phase supply and some occasional uh, high voltage dc lines all other supply in are the you can say three wire three phase so the line voltage uh, stated in these cases is always the voltage between any two phases so now i am going to discuss about the various voltage le levels like the 400 volt generally these are the standard values like 400 volt 3.3 kilo volt 6.6 kilo volt 11 kilo volt 33 kilo volt 66 kilo volt 110 kilo volt then 132 kilo volt 220 kilo volt 400 kilo volt so you have heard, heard about all these kind of uh, voltage level when we use about the power transmission and power distribution so it is uh, it is there is no hard and fast rule that what should be the voltage uh, level for the transmission network on what sh should be the voltage of the distribution system but uh, generally uh, the voltage level 132 uh, kilo volt and above are Uh, the part of the transmission network that means the high voltages are considered for the transmission of power supply why i will tell you later then lower voltage levels are used in the distribution system so these are the so power generation power transmission power distribution these are the basic three components of electrical power system so here i am showing you the typical electrical power supply uh, system where uh, you can see that the how the power is being generated at the plant and then it is being transmitted up to the consumer end so uh, through various stages so electrical power supply comprising the generating units that produce the electricity then after high voltage transmission lines that transport the electricity over the long distances then low voltage distribution lines are there that delivers the electricity to the consumers then you also know about the substations are there substations what which are the part of the electrical power system, uh, transmission and distribution system where the voltage are trans transformed to the lower levels for distributing power to the end users this is transmitted at very high voltages why because it it reduce the losses so if i uh, talk about the different uh, component of the power uh, this power system or power transmission and distribution system so you can see here that the uh, grid substation uh, the various voltage uh, it these can be categorized into the various voltage level like grid substation sub transmission system then power sub transmission uh, uh, system you can say here then power uh, primary distribution feeders can be there then distribution substations secondary distribution network so when we talk that uh, grid substation so power from the transmission network is delivered to the 
sub transmission network after stepping down to the voltage to 66 kV or 33 kV through the uh, 220, 132 or 33 or 33 kV substations. So, you will come to know about all this thing uh, later that how this is being happening uh, one by one. Then uh, that means the power is being generated at some uh, voltage suppose 11 kilo volt and the transmission is done at very high voltages and then the, uh, up to the distribution you have to reduce these voltages because at the distribution end the, uh, the voltage is kept uh, uh, low that is the 400 uh, volt or 220 volt single uh, phase supply which is coming to the consumer end or at your home or various industry or hospitals. Uh, it, it, is, it can be the three phase supply, it can be the single phase supply. So this complete, uh, this constitutes the complete network of the um, power system. So now the sub transmission system where the network uh, power is uh, carried at the 66 to 33 uh, kilo volt by the overhead lines and by underground cables. So distribution substation power is further stepped down to, uh, by the 11 by 0.4 kV transformers. What are these transformers? You all are aware of it. A transformer is, uh, uh, is used for the either for as a step up transformer or step down transformer. That means the voltage is uh, can be step up from one level to another level or it can be uh, step down from one voltage level to the another voltage level for the utilization purpose. Uh, so this, uh, this transformer is, uh, is a very uh, essential equipment for all this pa uh, power uh, uh, transmission and distribution system. So uh, let me discuss about the uh, power uh, generation. So uh, if we say that the uh, what are the uh, major player in the uh, power generation in India? So in India we have the uh, the uh, central utilities such as the National uh, Thermal Power Corporation, National Hydro Power Corporation, Nuclear Power Corporation, Damodar Valley Corporation, and many more. So these are the uh, which are basically involved in the gener generation of the power. Then state electricity boards, which are the uh, state owned utilities, like you can say the Odisha, Haryana, AP, or Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka. So they all they, they also involve in the generation of the power. Then there can be the licenses such as the BSES, CESC. Or there can be the independent power uh, producers or projects can be there. When the, we talk about the power generation, then uh, you know that the power can be generated uh, uh, in the thermal station, um, in the hydroelectric stations, nuclear uh, electric stations, or diesel stations, or gas turbine plants, so, or we can say stations, or we can say plants. So there are various plants based on the uh, and uh, the source, the fuel we use uh, to produce the electricity. So based on that, uh, the fuel, the name of the plant is there, like thermal stations where the coal is used to produce the electricity. So um, there are various uh, sources of energy uh, which can be used to produce the electrical power. And uh, so these, uh, we can say that power, this comes from the uh, renewable or non-renewable uh, sources. If we say the non-renewable sources, non-renewable sources are the conventional energy sources. That conventional energy sources, uh, uh, you can say, we, you can obtain from the fossil fuels like the um, coal, uh, oil, natural gas. So if you use it more, it can deplete. So uh, you all know about this that uh, to reduce the mitigation uh, or, or mitigate from mitigating the carbon uh, uh, to the atmosphere and to let like, or emitting of the uh, the carbon uh, in the atmosphere. So for the reduction of it, or some there are some other major major concern uh, or like the um, uh, to save the environment and uh, um, to uh, for the energy security. So uh, now the renewable energy sources are being very popular, and uh, this can work as a uh, alternative uh, for the. Uh, uh, this uh, conventional energy sources. So the, uh, in, uh, why we are using uh, renewable energy sources? Because uh, these, are, uh, these can be replenished and uh, conventional sources can deplete. So uh, what are the, these renewable energy sources? Like the solar, biomass, wind, 
tidal. So these uh, sources or uh, these are in abundant. These are available in the nature. So these can be these can also be used to produce uh, electrical power. So various other electrical sources, jo, which are very common, the conventional uh, sources are. They can be the solid fuels. They can be the liquid fuels. They can be the uh, natural uh, gas or hydro or they can be the nuclear different kind of techniques are used in, uh, in the coal the steam uh, is produced uh, using the fuel and this steam runs the turbine and uh, this turbine give the mechanical energy then this mechanical energy converted into the electrical energy by using the generator so uh, so like this the, the various uh, in the various process these plants generate the electrical power Similarly, in the hydro power plant also, uh, the head of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the water, it is used to uh, run the turbine and then uh, turbine's mechanical power is converted into the, elect um, the electrical power by using the generator. There are uh, some other energy forms uh, if I discuss that the wind. So uh, it is used near the coastal areas and high, um, where the very high wind possibilities so the wind power, uh, wind plants can be there. We have seen the uh, wind turbine. So this is the renewable energy uh, source which can produce the uh, electrical uh, power. And um, thermal conversion is also possible, like uh, um, using the solar collector. Uh, that means that the heat energy received from the sun uh, is collected, and this can be converted into the uh, electrical form, uh, electrical energy by using the thermal conversion. Sunlight is used to uh, heat the water and the steam is produced, steam runs the turbine and then uh, after that mechanical energy is, uh, is converted into the electrical energy uh, by using the, uh, the generator. Then photovoltaic conversion is also there. It's PV, you have uh, seen a lot of uh, photovoltaic panel uh, in just uh, near you at, at a rooftop. Uh, photovoltaic uh, plants or uh, you have seen the uh, different uh, this mo we can say pv modules so these modules or solar power plant are there so these uh, solar power converted directly into the electricity by using these uh, photovoltaic panels they have the property solar cells are there these cells uh, what they do they the sunlight is incident on the um, panel and it is converted into the uh, uh, electrical energy electricity then tidal waves are used to run the turbine for generation. Similarly, the fuel cells are also where the without combustion, the, the electricity can be produced. Biogas, the gas produced by the breakdown of the organic matter in the absence of the oxygen. So this can also be uh, used for the uh, produce the electricity. The chemical reaction, the chemical energy, this can be converted into the, into the electrical energy like in the batteries, primary uh, cells or the storage cells. So like, like for example, the dry cells uh, uh, you have seen here that uh, there is the chemical energy converted into the electrical energy, nickel, cadmium, lead acid. So in our country, um, the national electric uh, grid in India has the installed capacity of almost 370, uh, 370 gigawatt uh, in uh, December 19. So uh, the share of uh, installed generation capacity from uh, energy sources uh, is being shown here, like coal, large hydro, uh, of the percentage from the coal is 55%, 55.5%, large hydro 12.3%, small hydro 1.3%, wind power is sharing the generation of 10.2% in India, solar power 9.3%, biomass 2.7% at present. Uh, and uh, nuclear 1.8 percent. So these, uh, the gas is 6.7 percent, diesel 0.1 percent. So these are the contribution of the various uh, uh, energy sources in the power generation. So learners, now we are going to discuss about the power transmission. So uh, in India, the power plants produce the 50 cycle per second. Uh, the, this is the frequency which is measured in hertz and alternating uh, and the voltages between the 11 kilovolt and 25 kilovolt. So the electric power is brought from the power plant or generating power plant to the consumer through an extensive transmission and distribution system comprising the 
uh, transmission lines, it may have the you know, distribution uh, networks or forming the state and regional grid. Grid is the interconnections of the various lines. So, the various stages uh, for the uh, power transmission. At the power plant, uh, the three phase voltage is generated and stepped up uh, to the higher voltage for the uh, cross country tra uh, uh, transmission. Uh, basically, on the, uh, by the cables are shown on the towers. So, the high voltage and the extra high voltage transmission in the next stage to transport the uh, this uh, AC power from the power plant over the long distance at voltage like 132 kilo volt, 220 kilo volt, 400 kilo volt, 760 kilo volt. So, for the longer distance uh, and higher uh, powers, higher voltages are uh, um, economical you can say. Uh, yes, you know, by using high voltages, there is a reduction in the line losses. So, uh, in, so in special cases, uh, you will come to know that high voltage uh, direct current transmission uh, 500 kV DC is also uh, preferred some cases. But in normal cases, generally uh, the, uh, the high voltage AC transmission is there. So, sub transmission network at 132 kV, 110 kV or 60, uh, 66 kV or 33 kV. So, constitutes the next link uh, towards the end user. So, uh, some uh, major uh, player in the power transmission are uh, you can say the like most of the uh, states uh, reconstructed their state electricity boards and uh, have unbundled them uh, in three entities generation, transmission and distribution. So, you know that the uh, at the time of the independence uh, that, uh, that, is, that state electricity boards they one uh, was the one utility, uh, utility which was handling all the things generation, transmission and distribution. Later the reforms came and then uh, unbundling uh, have been uh, made and then the three entities generation, transmission and uh, distribution uh, uh, central sector uh, company like uh, Power Grid Corporation of India Limited which is also called PGCIL is the owner of most of the higher voltage transmission lines in the country. A few private sectors also like pa Tata Power, Reliance Power have also been entered in this field now. You can say that this power distribution segments involve uh, 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 receipt of uh, bulk power from the transmitting uh, uh, utilities and uh, the supply of the final consumers at lower voltage level distribution like after the transmission you have to distribute it, it to the consumer they, 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 they can be the major consumer or they can be the low level consumer which consume the power at small level. So, distribution at generally made at that 11 kilo volt, uh, 6.6 .6 kilo volt, 3.3 kilo volt. So, uh, uh, this constitute the last link uh, to the consumers which is connected directly or uh, through step down transformers. You have seen the substations are uh, uh, um, with this uh, kind of uh, uh, voltage level. So, these transformers uh, which are used in the substation bring the uh, voltage level down to the 400 volt for the uh, three phase uh, or uh, three, uh, three wire, four wire, uh, uh, three or four wire uh, secondary distribution. The fourth wire is generally present is called the uh, neutral or a return wire. So, you have seen that the, uh, so I'm, I will discuss it about uh, uh, this in a later stage that uh, how this is, this is being happened. So, the single phase uh, residential uh, lighting loads is uh, connected between any uh, one phase or uh, and neutral which is of 230 volt. And if there is a three phase load, then it is connected across the three phase line directly. So, here this is the uh, typical electric power supply uh, system with uh, distribution uh, network. So, I am uh, showing it here that which is giving you a, a broad idea about that how the power is being uh, transmitted and um, uh, from the various towers are being shown here. Then at various voltage levels, uh, then uh, uh, step by step this uh, the, uh, this high transmission is there, high voltage transmission is there, then different substations are there. At distribution substation this voltage is being reduced and then it is reaching to the consumers by using the feeders or distribution network 
and up to the end consumers they, they can be the uh, uh, for our, uh, 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 the uh, the house uh, cons uh, consumer or industrial consumer so uh, and can be the commercial consumer so uh, this uh, layout will give you the some idea about the what is the power uh, transmission and distribution network so in, now i am going to discuss about this so uh, the power distribution system uh, uh, if we discuss then we can say that uh, uh, electricity generated by a power station is carried over a transmission line at very high voltage as i have discussed um, earlier also so usually these lines may run up to the hundreds of kilometers and deliver the power into the common transmission network that is called grid so this grid is connected uh, to the load centers through a sub transmission network of usually 33 kv or sometimes it can be the 66 kv lines so these lines terminate into the 33 kv or 66 kv substations where the voltage is stepped down to the 11 kv for the power distribution to the load points through a distribution network of lines at 11 kV or lower so this is from uh, some from transmission to distribution how the voltage is being reduced using the substations and transformers so the power uh, network concerned to the end user is uh, distribution network of 11 kV line or feeder uh, down, downstream to the uh, we can say the feeders downstream of uh, 33 kV substations so each of uh, 11 kV feeder which uh, which emanates from the 33 kV substation branch further into the several uh, uh, subsidiary you can say the 11 kV feeders to carry the power close to the load points so at these load points a transformer further reduce the uh, voltage from um, 11 kV to 400 kV uh, uh, there are some consumer which want to utilize the, pow uh, the power at 400 kV like the, uh, the household applications we use the, uh, the power in 230 volt uh, single phase supply or uh, three, three phase supply also can be used uh, for the big consumer. So uh, uh, now our uh, aim is to convert the power to um, convert the voltage from 11 kV to 400 kV to provide the last mile connecting um, uh, or last mile connections through the 400 volt feeder which is called the low tension feeders lt feeders which is very um, popular uh, name um, so just in the brief uh, what are the advantages of the dc transmission and what are the disadvantages of the dc transmission so uh, if we say that dc transmission the advantages is that it require only two conductors and there is no problem of the inductance and capacitance so the lesser voltage drop uh, for the same load and sending end voltage uh, then uh, one kind of effect you uh, have heard or not uh, the skin uh, effect or lesser uh, no skin effect will be there which generally comes in the case of the AC uh, uh, when you deal with the alternating current then corona loss is also when you deal with the, elect uh, the AC current so uh, lesser interference with the communication circuit uh, generation is at uh, high DC voltages is difficult so and uh, and the second uh, major uh, disadvantage is that we cannot use transformer that means that uh, DC transformers are not available. AC transmission advantage is that the high AC voltages can easily be generated and AC voltages can easily be stepped up or uh, stepped down. So as uh, the AC voltages increases, the transmission loss decreases. Some disadvantage can be with the uh, AC transmission is that uh, uh, existence of the inductance and capacitance. Uh, so uh, and this because the some reactive uh, power is uh, losses are there so uh, presence of skin effect and uh, more than two conductors are required and when you say the uh, power distribution you have heard the word of feeder so this a uh, feeder could be either of uh, overhead lines or it can be the underground uh, cables then uh, in urban areas owing to the high density of the consumer the length of the 11 kV feeder may be generally up to the uh, 3 km. That means we have to reduce the length of the feeder uh, in the urban areas. And in other hand, in the rural areas, the feeder length is much larger. Uh, it is up to the uh, 20 km. So uh, then uh, a, a 400 volt feeder uh, um, should normally be restricted to the, uh, that means if you are using the low voltage feeder, 400 volt feeder means low voltage feeder. 
so it is restricted to the 0.5 to 1 kilometer only that means uh, it is it, uh, it is advisable that it should not be uh, run through uh, run over the long distances so this unduly uh, long feeders lead to the low voltage at the uh, consumer end that means the losses are there so some measures are like uh, uh, reduction of the aggregate technical and commercial losses then uh, it is necessary to improve the uh, customer service then increase the revenue collections yes the theft is there and uh, the power pilferage is there generally in the rural area areas where the uh, i have just mentioned this um, adopt better management in the distribution sector and uh, use of the information technology yes uh, because uh, mm, uh, uh, you have to keep watch on uh, all the uh, consumers and continuously because the, uh, the supply is there and demand uh, demand is continuously increasing so to um, so at various places uh, the different kind of technology is being used uh, information technology uh, by using this uh, uh, these these kind of technology you can uh, make the efficient power distribution uh, system or uh, you can uh, a uh, lot of uh, uh, challenges or the problems uh, you can address by this so the the major uh, uh, the some um, problems i'm just stating here that uh, in with the generation transmission and the distribution um, system if we talk about the generation then uh, there can be in some places in inadequate uh, power uh, generation capacity so uh, inadequate power generation capacity uh, may uh, cause uh, the uh, may is the is the uh, is one of the problem then uh, lack of uh, optimum utilization of existing generation capacity if the power plant is there or generation is there but it is not being uh, utilized proper so this is also one of the problem with the generation Uh, so this is the this this may cause the huge loss then problem with the availability of the uh, source of energy like um, um, uh, there are all the location is good everything is there and the the plant is there but suppose uh, the coal uh, for the thermal plant is not available then lack of grid discipline uh, or poor grid management because grid is the interconnection of the network so uh, so there are uh, the load centers and uh, which continuously interact with the uh, the, uh, the with the grid uh, um, uh, um, uh, then what they that what is the uh, what is the requirement the schedule uh, the schedule, proper scheduling is necessary so uh, lack of uh, grid discipline or poor grid management can also be the one of the problem in the transmission uh, network then high transmission losses um if uh, the poor equipments are used supply if uh, some uh, because of some technical issues the uh, um, this the transmission losses can be there and which will be the huge which will cause the huge loss in the, in the system so these uh, transmission losses need to be avoided so this is the uh, one problem in the distribution this is the most challenging area uh, 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 we can say that distribution uh, sector so uh, there are uh, some uh, problem because this is directly uh, uh, dealing with the consumer end and whatever supply is there demand uh, uh, to meet that demand it is uh, uh, this system is working so um, inadequate or uh, and aging sub transmission and uh, uh, distribution network uh, is there because uh, we cannot change the trans uh, transmission or or distribution network frequently or uh, or because this is a this is the huge investment is required uh, for pr uh, making the uh, complete power system or uh, for the transmission and distribution of the electrical power so uh, uh, with uh, with the aging of this uh, what happened that the uh, some uh, it leading to the frequent power cuts and uh, load uh, local failures can be there faults can be there then electric voltage and uh, low or high uh, supply uh, uh, the frequency is there so which uh, which will uh, that means the the quality of the power is uh, is being affected because of this so which is the uh, uh, the challenges or which these are the uh, the problems uh, for the distribution system so then large scale uh, theft this is also one of the major problem which caused the higher commercial loss in the in, uh, power distribution sector so this uh, theft uh, is to be um, um, avoided so insufficient use of the electricity by the end consumer if energy is uh, if power is there but it is not being uh, utilized that means insufficient use of there by this so uh, because we cannot store it 
uh, 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 only the, the battery and some some they can store only small th uh, small power but for um, so whatever uh, is generating it is it should be used for uh, making the efficient system or uh, so uh, so this this can also be there then um, bad uh, power factor also so poor power power factor uh, cause the high losses uh, I have uh, mentioned in my first session that uh, what is the power factor and how it can affect the um, uh, system. So, uh, so power factor should always be high. Uh, uh, it is unity near to unity, a point A to uh, one. If it is poor, that means it is um, um, more power is uh, it is drawing the more power from the source, and uh, it will it can affect the uh, whole system. So uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, problems of the consumers like the hurdles um, in getting new connections. Uh, if, uh, the, uh, if somebody is not uh, there, uh, he was not in that uh, uh, in distribution network then sub in the remote area if suppose uh, there is new uh, consumers are there so then, uh, then there can be the hurdles in the getting the new connections or enhancement of the load uh, uh, loads uh, suppose uh, and this distribution is serving to some load, but uh, if the, uh, demand is increasing, so enhancement of load is there. So to, it is necessary to serve the that load. So this kind of problem may also come. Then um, then stiff procedures. The procedures are fixed. Then then uh, if there is no flexibility, then this may also cause pro problem. Then unfriendly uh, commercial uh, policies uh, are also the. Um, uh, some um, the problem uh, for the distribution sector. Uh, now uh, I'm coming to the uh, uh, grid. Uh, uh, what is uh, grid? So uh, you have heard about uh, this is very familiar word with us, and I have mentioned several times in my uh, session also. So you know that the power system has a generating unit to generate the electrical energy, uh, which is uh, consumed at the load. So and this energy cannot be stored and has to be uh, consumed at the same instant generation is there it should be consumed but since the load is not con uh, concentrated at one place and uh, most of the cases it is not possible to have a um, uh, generator uh, very close to the load center at all the times so we go for the transmission lines that means um, for for distribute uh, for transmitting the uh, this electrical power for various places which facilitates the transmission of power from generator to load so to provide uh, redundancy the transmission lines are also interconnected so that means the interconnection of the transmission lines is there so thus all generator uh, generation units and the load centers are connected and as a result grid is formed is it clear so uh, uh, so from the generating consumer uh, genera generating generation to the transmission and distribution and up to the consumer so this a big network is uh, there and grid is an intermediary uh, between the generation and load so is this grid is basically the connection of the uh, just generating station substations loads through a transmission lines at a uh, voltage level above the distribution voltage level that means 11 kilovolt or 33 kilovolts so above this generally the grid is uh, formed at that level so distribution voltage however is uh, not strictly defined uh, as I mentioned uh, previously uh, so it is uh, different for uh, different areas uh, in some distribution system power is taken uh, from the grid at uh, 33 kV in some it is taken at 66 kV uh, and in some it may be of uh, 220 kilovolt so therefore uh, the grid covers the uh, uh, the all mentioned high voltage system down to the down to the level of uh, connection point of the distribution system so how uh, can you define the grid um, uh, if the very uh, standard definition if i uh, say that the grid is defined in the electricity act 2003 as the high voltage uh, backbone system of interconnected transmission lines substations and generating plants so what are the advantages of this grid it make the system reliable it make the system stable and there are some economical advantages so the system is uh, more reliable uh, uh, since we serve the load in more than one ways using grid 
as a result uh, we can say even if uh, one generation unit uh, fails then uh, uh, the rest units which are connected with the grid they can share the load that means the reliability of the uh, system can be increased by using the grid then stability how uh, the stability can be maintained the system uh, becomes more stable as uh, uh, changes of a fault uh, distributing the whole system uh, become less with this then uh, there can be uh, there are economical advantage in the grid the cost required is lesser um, than as a uh, dedicated uh, system since lesser installed capacity is required as well as uh, um, uh, lesser uh, spinning reserve is involved this is what this is the reserve a grid where you are uh, 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 that means uh, you are uh, if you say that what uh, what is storing the uh, the electrical power or uh, from where it is being distributed to the different system so grid is this so uh, the and reliability comes with the integrated uh, grid operation for smooth uh, uh, you can say evacuation of the power from the generating station and uh, its delivery, delivery to the uh, states and periphery one uh, point is of uh, another uh, grid security uh, comes so security uh, comes um, by maintaining the system parameters like uh, frequency bus voltage line uh, loadings and transformer loading within the permissible limits so these all the parameters which uh, need to be in the limit that uh, to work the system properly so uh, it involves the stable uh, and uh, smooth operation of the grid so we have uh, discuss uh, we have uh, discussed all these uh, aspects that what is the power um, generation what is the power transmission what is power distribution uh, at various voltage levels how the system works so and uh, what what is grid what are the grid reliability issues uh, grid management so all these things have been discussed in this session so next session we will discuss other part of this course thank you